and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're going to do a little bit of a different topic today. We're going to be talking about endometriosis, my endometriosis, like journey, story, whatever. Um, and my little vlog after I have surgery. I don't know, I've watched a few vlogs and like quite intriguing. I just want to say excuse me if I sound like I don't really know what I'm talking about but when it comes to like stories like this or like me having to explain something <laughs> I suck at it. Today is the 5th of November. Um, I am scheduled to have my surgery next Tuesday on the 10th of November. It was originally the 27th of November but then they rang me yesterday and they asked if I wanted to have it done next Tuesday and I said yes because I was kind of like glad at the same time that it could just be over with because I'm someone who <laughs> I don't know if anyone else is the same as me but I hate the thought of just going under and like having surgery I don't know it's just like a fear of mine if you're new here hi I'm Tegan and welcome to my channel um things that I cover are mostly like beauty related vlogs i love my vlogs vlogmas vlogmas love vlogmas um but today we're doing a little bit of a different topic which i said before which is talking about endometriosis now there have been a lot of women that have been diagnosed with endometriosis um i have been supposedly diagnosed. I know the only way that you can really find out is through keyhole surgery which is what I'm getting done. I, I have a gyno and then I went to see a nurse in hospital and she was like really high up or something and she already could tell so practically I am diagnosed with endometriosis. I don't, I'm, look now let me give you a little bit of background story. So originally I had very bad periods. Um, well not like bad, but I always had... Oh yeah, if you're a boy or a, or a man. Or, so if you are watching and you are a male, thank you for watching anyway. And <laughs> I'm sorry that you have to listen to this, but it is insightful. I feel like a lot of females would be watching this video right now. And this is why I'm trying to be as serious as possible. I want to give as much information and talk about my story as I can but everyone's different like everyone's stories are different so I'm trying to respect that as well okay so going back I always had bad periods they weren't like extremely bad but I always had a heavy flow like I'd have a lot of period pain a lot of period um, there were times I remember like I would just like crawl into a little ball but I'm sure a lot of women too but like these were like I felt like I was getting stabbed like someone was like I think I was at this house actually like I was like <laughs> on my hands and knees <laughs> in pain like a cat because I had like a really bad period pain and it was I think it was a couple of months ago like other things started to happen. I won't go into too much detail, but my nan requested that I go to see a doctor. They did like all these tests and whatever. And I had to go to a like ultrasound and like get an internal camera thingy to look at my ovaries and see like everything was fine, like there's no cancer or any unsus vicious activity going on down there. Um, turns out their walls. They found a cyst. So a cyst is very harmful. It happens in a lot of women. Um, but they weren't sure if it was an over uh, ovarian cyst or an endometrioma. And endometrioma is I think it's like a blood filled thing and it's related to endometriosis. Like I said I don't have exact knowledge. I'm just like giving my my story kind of like I I'm still like confused about everything. I'm not confused, but like unsure of like the descriptions or like the knowledge behind everything, like the endometriosis and stuff. Um, I think I had about three ultrasounds. I had a stomach one, like they just check like you, like as if you were pregnant, like getting an ultrasound, and then I had the internal ones, not pleasant, but anyway, it had to be done. Um. So, I don't know how many of them I got done, 
Then I had to see a gynecologist in March. Oh my god, this goes way back because it's November and I think about this all the time. I feel like I left it for so long. Like this had been like the pain and stuff like um, periods, other things, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, everything else. I left it way too long and I could have like sorted it out way earlier, but I mean, at least I am sorting it out now. Um, so in March, it was 2.5 centimeters, like my endometrioma or the ovaries. It's, this stage, they still weren't sure which one it was. So then in April, oh God, um, it was 4.8 centimeters, 4.8 centimeters. That is pretty much the size of this. I'm, I'm not kidding. Like I'm talking about the, the width. So imagine that on your ovary. April, which was I think my last scan that I had with them, it was 2.8. So it went, uh, it keeps going up and down. Poppy! Um, I feel like it varies because I feel like sometimes I can like feel it like, like expanding and like decreasing. I don't know. It's, the gynecologist requested that I go see a nurse um, at this hospital. So I went to the hospital and they did like the ultrasound as well and like the internal one and she noticed heaps of adhesions on my uterus which she suspected was endo the doctor the gyno and everyone just from explaining everything um are just suspecting that i have endometriosis hence why i'm going to get keyhole surgery to actually 100% diagnose me. Um, so the nurse at the hospital told me that was an endometrium, I'm pretty sure. Um, she also told me that I had adhesions on my uterus and she then mentioned that um, I actually had my uterus attached to my vows. So that's not supposed to be like that. They're going to have to <laughs> deal with that as well um, during the surgery. Um, so then I went back to the gynecologist and she sat me down and like we were talking about when to have surgery and everything. Um, and she said that I needed to have surgery so we booked a date and then I just asked her questions about it and um, she said so what will happen is I'll just like put like little holes in my stomach and go in like with keyhole surgery and um, they're going to remove the endometrioma off my ovary. Uh, I think she said they're going to try and not make it bleed or something um, because if it bleeds it could result in me losing an ovary which is quite scary but I have faith that everything will be okay. Uh, the whole topic with the kids conversation came up like in the future obviously I want to be a mother like that is like my goal in life is just to be a mum um, so <laughs> yeah every time I was around kids like knowing this information I was like very hesitant and very sad because I never knew, like, I, you still don't know like even in like the future if it's going to affect anything but I've heard like heaps of stories about everyone having endo and they've had kids perfectly fine and whatnot but then I've heard other stories so I'm just trying to keep positive and hopefully everything will be okay. I know you can still have kids with one ovary and many people have, many people, many females have done it. Um, but yeah, it just scares me because <laughs> I was born with two ovaries, I would like to keep it that way, but I still have faith in everything will be okay in that department. She also told me that they will deal with like my uterus attached to my vowels. They'll deal with that and then do the endometriosis stuff at the same time and deal with like cutting off the endometrium off my ovary so this process I think she said will take about half an hour uh, half an hour an hour and a half sorry I have missed a few steps here I just wanted to explain that's probably why like when I am going for number twos <laughs> that's why I felt like I always was having period cramps because my uterus was attached to my valves which was making it feel like I had 
period cramps and I never knew why that was happening because it literally felt like sometimes I was just sitting on the bar. Um, so yes, <laughs> that's lovely. And then she will deal with the vowels and everything as much as she can. Um, but if it was like too messy, I don't know if it was like too hard to deal with like I actually have to go somewhere else to have surgery which is quite scary so I don't really want that to happen I'm hoping everything turns out fine which I have hope it will and I'm positive that it will because I'm just trying to think positive because <laughs> I have a fear of going under the knife so <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one I'm sure I'm not I'm sure I'm not the only one so this concludes my little background story and I will catch up with you on the day of my surgery, which will be Tuesday the 10th, which I will be freaking out about. And I'll just show you, like, like I'll just probably film there a little bit in the morning because I won't be able to eat anything. It depends, like, when my surgery is. I still actually don't know because it's been changed now. So we'll, we'll, we will see. Um, and because of coronavirus, I can't have anyone with me so my partner's just gonna have to drop me off and not come in and wait or anything so I'm pretty much going in there alone which scares the crap out of me because yeah oh anyway <laughs> I'm pretty sure they give you like a little update of how much endo was found or uh, I'm not sure like a couple of other vlogs that I've watched people found out like how much they had removed or I don't know so I will I will update you all I just thought this vlog would be a little bit of a serious video because I don't really sit down and talk to you guys that much about I will chat with you guys later I'll see you next Tuesday hello guys I just wanted to check in with you guys quickly it is the day before my surgery so it's Monday the night today super scared i had a shit sleep last night because i was just so nervous um but that's just well sorry i'm filming on my phone um that's just because i was just thinking about it too much and yeah overreacting i'm still a bit nervous um but i've come to the terms with i will be okay like i know i'll be okay it's just like a little fear that i have and like i think it's just because also i'm going in there alone because of coronavirus i can't really have anyone with me so it's like i'm requested to not have anything to eat after 7 a.m tomorrow morning um but i can drink water from 7 to 11 because my thing is at 12 but i actually have to get to the hospital at 12 because of the whole coronavirus thing that like wants you to be on time like not early or whatever um what else i'm requested to bring a um pair of slippers and what else am i supposed to bring a dressing gown i'm supposing so you're comfortable and everything are the gynecologist i forgot to say this but the gynecologist actually requests that i skip my period like on the pill because i'm on the pill so she requested like prior to my surgery like i've been doing it for like three months now to skip my period so that's what i have been doing um but then but ever since i've done that i have been breakthrough bleeding for like three months and i went to the doctors to you know sort that out but they gave me tablets but they didn't really help so i don't know what's gonna go on with that but I'm sure it will get sorted out. Um, I might bring some pads tomorrow because I've watched a few people's vlogs and they have said that you know they they start leaking and everything. So I might bring a few pads with me. So we'll see how we go. I'll check in with you guys tomorrow, and I'll probably wake up at about 6:30 just so I can have something to eat and then go back to bed and then get organized for the day so wish me luck <laughs>
until 11 o'clock. I don't know what time it is now, so I must. I was requested to drink water from 7 to 11. Um, I woke up this morning and had two pieces of toast at 6.30 because I wasn't supposed to eat anything after 7 um, seven a.m. I thought if I did my hair nice and pretty and obviously nothing else then I'd feel okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel a bit more presentable than just wearing some leggings and a comfortable top. So. Yes, we've got like another hour and 20 minutes until I go to hospital, so. Oh. I'm just gonna film everything on my phone from here on out, so if the quality isn't that great, I'm so sorry, but yeah, pack some essentials. I'm gonna pack my dressing gown, my slippers, and then I'm gonna pack some pads just in case, because I've heard like people's stories of like them leaking afterwards, so. Mm. <laughs> I can't even speak because I'm so nervous. But we are on the way. Gotta wear a mask. Ooh. Excuse me, Maggie's. Oh god, we've got some baby magpies living here. We're here. Oh boy, I'm so scared. So we're parked outside the maternity area. We've still got a couple more minutes. Um, so scared. <laughs> it's not funny. She said something about me having to go through the maternity section, so I'll have to ring them and make sure. Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Are you gonna ring up? I suppose I have to. <laughs> I don't want to go. I've got the waterworks happening. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes. Okay. Well. How are you <laughs> oh gosh. I was like, who hey, do we know him? <laughs> Reverse parallel people, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, me either. Um, so we're just here. I'm gonna get out soon and then say goodbye to Brennan. And then we'll just yeah. see you on the other side. You'll be right, hun. <laughs> Love you. Love you. So I think yeah, there's a new for an hour and a half. They've uh, given me a bit all the information, so, so I'll call you, you guys in a bit later. You know, I'm just having a drink and some biscuits, so. Just very, very tired. Very tired. The pain is very low just because of like, the drugs that I've had and whatever, but. I don't know what it'll be like after, yeah. so we'll just have to see. I hope you can hear me. I'm on the way home. Friends come and take me. Okay, so I am home. Brandon's just making the couch look comfortable for me because this is where I'm sleeping tonight. I'll give you some more information tomorrow. Um, I know a little bit of what happened during the procedure, but um, I need to get my records just because I want to 
sound intelligent and not just... <laughs> I want to know exactly. Oh yes, that's where they took the needle out. Um, I'm just trying to stand for a little bit just because I've been lying down for so much. Um, also, no, Rocco, no, no. This naughty dog, honestly. These are crazy animals. Um, also, um, early on, I think it was about 7.30ish, I went to go to the toilet. I went to go to the toilet and um, I actually nearly fainted because, sorry, I'm just updating the vloggy vlog. Uh, I nearly fainted because I just got so hot and that was the first time really standing up. So yeah, my body did not like that. And I was sweating like an actual pig. <laughs> so doped up. <laughs> also, I've got the best boyfriend in the world. Oh, bell peppers. He bought me so many snacks. <gasps> oh, yummy. I'm just feeling a little bit. A little bit um, queasy, so I'm just going to lie down. Rocco. He's scaring me, this dog, because he's just so hyperactive. Also, I just want to show you quickly my incisions. Sorry, in my underwear, but four incisions. Love that for me. Also, I just wanted to say that um, my shoulder pain is kicking in now. It wasn't like this when I woke up or anything, but I've had a lot of people get like shoulder pain. Um, but yeah, it's on this side and it's quite painful. So I'm just going to relax and then I'll put the tune in with you guys tomorrow and eat some food and I'll give you an update about everything tomorrow. Hopefully I can get a hold of my medical records about um, today's procedure. Um, and yeah. Bye. Good morning, everybody. Um, so it's the next day. I'm in a lot more pain than I was in um, yesterday. So, yeah, I still got my little name badge things on and like my sticky things. I need to take them off. I, oh, I dropped some jam on my shirt today. So I've eaten some toast and that's about it. Poppy is so, like the dogs are just so worried about me. And I was laying with Poppy before and she rammed her bum into my stomach and far out did that, like, <laughs> did that hurt? Okay, um, instead of uh, getting my medical records because I've been looking up on the internet, apparently I might have to pay a fee or something for them, I'm not sure, but Rocco, ah, get down. <laughs> Dan, naughty bloody dog. I thought I would just come on here and just explain some things that I can remember. Um, so what the doctors told me, they diagnosed me with severe endometrium, endometriosis. So I'm officially diagnosed. Like we always thought that I was going to have endometriosis due to what I told the doctor and um, everything like that. So then I think they got some or most of it out. I'm not sure. I think they got as much out as they could. Um, apparently there was a chocolate cyst found or something. Um, then they cut the endometrioma or cyst or whatever off my right ovary and they sent it off for a biopsy just to make sure that, you know, it's not cancerous or anything. Um, they were able to remove my valves from my uterus, so that's all good. Uh, what else did she say? Um, one thing that's got me quite, like, confused and concerned is because you better not jump on me. Don't. Um, they put this dye in my fallopian tubes. I think it was to, like test um to see like 
what goes through it or not, like what goes through my fallopian tubes. Um, she said the right fallopian tubes, the dye went fine. Yeah, no, the dye went fine through the right ovary apparently, um, but apparently the left ovary, um, the dye didn't really go through it well at all. So they weren't sure if it was blocked. I mean the fallopian tube, not the ovary. Um, they weren't sure if the fallopian tube was blocked or if it was spasming, I think she said. So I'm quite concerned about that one. Um, but as long as I have one working fallopian tube, oh god. And I'm pretty sure there was some other like technical things that they told me, but I can't really remember that. Um, I'm just telling you like the stuff that I can remember. And I think they put something like inside and flushed out and cleaned everything in my uterus. So that's all clean and stuff. Um, yeah. So the pain the day after is a bit more painful than the day of because you're obviously full of drugs and um, stuff. So um, I reckon the pain today is about, I think yesterday I said to the doctors before I went home, that it was about um, a three or a four, which wasn't that painful. Um, I was able to move around a lot more yesterday, but because I was on like pain medication and stuff, I was a lot more mobile, um, but today it's very hard to laugh. It's very hard to cough. <laughs> I, this is my cough. <laughs> that just hurts my stomach. Um, I haven't sneezed or anything yet, Brandon said good luck with that one, and I'm just like, oh, great. So, that's fabulous. Um, Rocco, are you being naughty? There's stuff all over the floor. So that's a mess. Spending my day on the couch pretty much, I can't really move. I've been trying to walk around a little bit though, and I am actually having trouble breathing at this stage as well, so the not being able to breathe properly bits coming in because it's like just so much stuff is going on down there <laughs> so that is my day for today i will tune in with you guys tomorrow and let you know how day three goes but yeah. i just got some flowers delivered rocco don't jump Rocker. on me please cute i'll read who it's from Is. How did you know? <laughs> they don't know the address off my heart. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Gainey. <laughs> Love you. Get a. It is the third day. Here's my little Kira. <laughs> Um, how do I feel today? I feel a bit poopy. I feel a bit crappy. Um, but I've had a nice sleep. So that's good. I think. <laughs> Could sleep uh, more though. getting up at like 20 times a night. Hey. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um. <coughs> so, I thought I would just update you all. Oh. Oh, burping, coffee and... Breathing sometimes is still a bit hard, but yeah, I'm going to finish my little vlog off here. Um, I'm just going to upload it this week, and I'm going to rest and try and get better. Um, but I just made this video so I could ensure other people on how it's going to be and what to expect but everyone's different so you know people handle pain differently and whatever but I don't I'm a silk um I hate being in pain but yeah I'm gonna end my video here if you like to give it a massive thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel I should probably take these bloody things off my wrist um I took off my sticky things yesterday that hurt hurts so bad um but yeah i will see you guys in my next video peace out bye
Yeah.